Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scott Leg Gladiatorian. Now, I've been asked um, quite a few times actually over quite a long period of time to talk about Captain America. Now, why have I been asked to talk about Captain America? Well, I'm not, you know, massively known for my um, knowledge on the Marvel Universe, but, you know, I watch the movies, I have some thoughts, and people specifically asked me to talk about his shield. Now, I don't have Captain America's shield, but I do happen to own and use a shield which is not dissimilar to Captain America's shield. It's slightly domed, it's not particularly big, and it's round. This one is made of steel. It's not made of any kind of sci-fi metals that um, stop everything. Um, but nevertheless, I should mention that shields can be made bulletproof relatively easily. Now, obviously bulletproof is a fairly loose term. There's a big difference between stopping a um, 45 ACP round compared to stopping uh, something like a 762 round from a Kalashnikov. So uh, clearly there are different things that you can stop with a shield. But what we have to assume is that Let's think about the context of Captain America's shield. So the actual character himself and when he's originally set is World War II. So we're predominantly talking about bolt action rifles, semi-automatic pistols, submachine guns, revolvers, um, but mostly, mostly rifles, pistols and submachine guns. Okay, um, so within that context, does a shield make sense? Well, Kind of. Okay, so you have to think about not does Captain America's shield work by itself against other hand weapons, because that's not mostly who Captain America's opponents are supposed to be. Most of his opponents are supposed to be Nazis with guns, okay? So, um, let's take one of Captain America's weapons, the 1911. Does a shield make sense used with a pistol? Well, I'd kind of say yes, actually. So if your intention is to get into close combat, um, i.e. close distance combat, and to infiltrate uh, places, strongholds and such like, and take out baddies at close range, well then, you could argue, if you want to stay alive, then clearly wearing some type of body armour is a good idea. Now. At that point, before I start talking about these two weapons used together, I just want you to consider if Captain America was a real person, if in World War II they had bred a certain type of super soldier to go in um, and take out lots of the enemy at close range, then it would have been a really good idea to stick some kind of body armour on him, wouldn't it? Because let's think about any kind of stray hand grenade or shrapnel or anything else could potentially kill him. Um, so just having a shield seems somewhat foolhardy when you could at least give them some type of flak jacket and something on the head. So um, I would say if I was designing Captain America now within a World War II setting, let's assume we've got some type of fantasy sci-fi metal which will stop bullets. So we just assume that if you can make sheets of this metal, it will stop conventional um, firearm rounds, whether they be rifles or pistols or submachine guns, um, then I would absolutely make sure I give him at least a breastplate um, and at least some type of helmet. Think about Ned Kelly, okay? So Ned Kelly, real person, used real armour against real firearms, and it kind of worked for a time. Um, and he essentially made body armor that protected the head, bit of the arms, the torso, and a bit of the legs and the groin. Because um, you don't want to get shot in the groin. Um, so absolutely, Captain America really should have some kind of body armor. It's a little bit foolhardy that he just has his leotard and a shield. But going back to what he actually does have, can these th two things be used in conjunction? Well, yes, absolutely. So quite simply, if you're using a pistol, if I just put the shield down for a minute, <clears throat> if you think about a normal person using a pistol, generally speaking, they're either going to be using it sideways on, okay, in which case they're a narrower target, but if they're, certainly if they're using it one-handed, that they've got more um, error, human error involved in, in targeting. Uh, but then if they come up into a position which is better for targeting, they bring a straighter on um, body position, just like in fencing, um, and you become a more vulnerable target. Now, in the modern world, this for law enforcement or even military, uh, for example, this is preferential because they're able to target better and you're usually wearing body armor, frankly. Okay, so body armor does change it. So if Captain America was wearing body armor, which he's not, but if he was, then absolutely it might be worth, in a World War II context, ignore the shield, 
give him lots of body armor, a bit like Iron Man, and then just have him using his firearms, whether it's a pistol or whether it's uh, some type of rifle, obviously this didn't exist yet, but if it was, you know, an MP44 type of equivalent, um, and have him using this so that he's actually able to take out more of the enemy uh, with his firearm. But there is a certain kind of comic book logic here that we don't necessarily always want Captain America to kill the enemies, although in World War II I kind of think you kind of do. But anyway, um, so coming back to the shield and gun, Okay, so if he's going to have a pistol for some reason, does it make, ha make sense having a shield? Well, it could do. Um, you can protect your vital targets with this shield. You can get it in front of the body and absolutely you can use your gun here. Now, what you wouldn't really want to do is bring the gun side forward and have the shield here. This makes a lot of sense or makes some degree of sense. For example, broadsword and Taj, if we look at Highland swordsmanship, if you're fighting with um, sword and shield or sword and Taj, but it doesn't make an awful lot of sense if you're using a gun because I have not actually protected any of my body from uh, bullets coming directly at me. So instead, I'd want to put my shield side forward and present the gun up here. Now that's got an interesting point because um, you could, with a revolver, brace the weapon against the side of the shield and that will increase your aiming um, uh, kind of accuracy. But with a, with a top sliding uh, semi-automatic, of course, uh, that is not an option because it would impede the motion of your uh, firearm and the reloading of your firearm if you let it touch against your shield. So let's, let's not consider that. But we could potentially have the shield out here in front and you could at that point actually hold the gun with two hands potentially and that's protecting some of your body target now so does that make sense yes there's i mean you could literally just hold it in front of you here and put the gun over the top that's the other option or anywhere around the the side or potentially even underneath but then you can't see but this would make some degree of logic because i've now covered some of my head at least the bottom half and all of my torso so that makes a certain degree of sense doing this but you can't see them, but I assure you I have some legs down here underneath the, uh, underneath the camera. So, does this type of shield make the most sense in a Captain America World War II scenario? And I would argue no. If we're primarily using a shield to hide behind while we shoot, then something like this would make a lot more sense. Because now, obviously not made of wood, it would have to be made of metal or some other... Um, sort of fantasy sci-fi material, but now we've protected everything from my bottom of my face all the way down to about my mid shin, and I can now use my pistol all around here to shoot, and I'm fully protected. So that would make a hell of a lot more sense, really, than the Captain America round shield. But that being the case, the round shield is certainly more manoeuvrable, and of course you can throw it and you can leap around with it and you can do all the things that Captain America likes to do. So there might be an argument to be made for the fact that using the smaller round shield fits more with the way that Captain America intends to fight. Now, we have so far talked about essentially using a shield and a weapon and that weapon being a gun. But does that, we do accept that makes some degree of sense, but is that what Captain America does most of the time in the movies? No, it isn't. Most of the time in the movies, for essentially Hollywood reasons, Hollywood logic, Captain America doesn't have a gun. He doesn't have anything in this hand. He just has a shield. Now, yes, I know he did dual shield at one point. Um, and uh, if you want to know about my views on dual shielding, then you can search for it in my videos because I have made a video about that. But let's assume you've just got one shield um, and you've got no weapon in your right hand. You know, you've got no... Um, just picking up a random sword here, usually you'd be using a shield with a weapon, whether it's a sword or an axe or a spear or whatever. But if you've just got a shield in this hand, does it make any sense to have it on your defensive side anymore? Probably not. Because if that's now your defense and your attack, it probably makes sense to have it more on your dominant side. Okay, because now you can block, you can defend with the thing, but of course, as we see, we can chop, you can punch, you can do all of these things that Captain America regularly does. You can pull it off, you can chuck the thing, you can do whatever you like with it, basically. Is it a great hand weapon by itself? No, not really. But that being said, 
it's not terrible, okay? Um, if you've only got a shield, yeah, absolutely you can punch with that edge, you can smash down with the edge here, you can strike up with the edge, you could barge with the front of it. There are things you can do with this shield, even if you don't have a hand weapon, but we shouldn't forget that this was not designed primarily as a striking weapon. It was designed as a blocking, as a defensive weapon, either passively, just to hold there to protect a line to your body from missile fire or whatever else, or indeed actively to defend, to push into incoming blows, to block incoming blows as you do something with your own weapon. So, Captain America's shield, does it make a lot of sense? Well, I would say kind of, actually, if your intention is to go in to combat with a gun in one hand and a shield on the other, yes, it does make some degree of sense. And we see it used today by certain types of um, uh, kind of police um, stuff. But what I would say is, just like with the police, generally speaking, if a gun is gonna be used, and the opponents have got guns, then generally speaking, a larger shield makes more sense than a small shield. Can the shield be used as itself just by a weapon with nothing else in the other hand? Yes, it can, but it's not a very effective weapon. So there we go. My summarization is that Captain America really should have a very effective gun for his right hand. He should have a very large shield for his left hand. This is assuming he's right-handed. And importantly, he should have some type of helmet because his head's always going to be, if he's shooting over his shield, his head's always going to be slightly exposed to gunfire. So he should have some type of bulletproof helmet. And I would say, why not have some type of bulletproof breastplate as well? Because it's not very heavy. Um, it's, you know, less heavy than the shield and it's worn on your body. So why not have it there as well? Uh, and a backplate probably as well. So there we go. So I think Captain America should be fully armoured like Ned Kelly with a bigger shield and with a very effective uh, firearm in his right hand, be it a pistol or submachine gun or something like that. Thank you for watching and uh, I will see you for the next video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.